Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Besties and Briefs. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Today, we are here to talk about my March Book of the Month predictions. Now, first, I do want to apologize for any and all background noise that you may hear. My husband is working from home today, and we also have an AT&T technician coming out to look at our internet, and so there may be some things going on in the background which I cannot control, but I have to get some videos filmed today, so we are going to work with what we have. As I mentioned in the start, we are here to already talk about my March Book of the Month predictions, which is absolutely wild. I cannot believe we are already to this point. And so we are going to jump right in because there are a lot of predictions for March. March is a pretty big release month for the publishing industry, and so I definitely have a lot of full categories to talk to you about today. But of course, as per usual, before we get into those predictions, we have to see how I did with February. So for the month of February, Book of the Month had five curated monthly selections. Out of those five, three of them were books that I featured in my February Book of the Month prediction video. We had The Women by Kristen Hanna, The Fox Wife by Yangtze Chu, and The Resort by Sarah Ox. We also had a book called Ready or Not by Cara Bass Stone, which was a February release, but it was not on my radar at all, so it was not featured in that video. And we also had a book called The Mayor of Maxwell Street by Avery Cunningham and that was actually a January release but it was a January 30th release and typically books that are released at the end of the month they have almost an equal probability of being featured in the month that they are released or the following month and we know that I do not focus on books that are coming out in a following month when I'm making those prediction videos so if a book is coming out on January 30th and I think it's going to be featured in book of the month I'm going to talk about it for the month it's being released in. Now let's go ahead and jump into the add-ons. Technically for the month of February book of the month had six new add-on selections however two of them I believe were mid-month add-ons that were announced in January. So they were already available to add to your box prior to that February 1st date. And that was Family Family by Lori Frankel and More by Molly Roden Winter. And I do believe I mentioned those in the video or I posted a comment about it on that video. So we're not going to talk about those today. We are only going to talk about the four newest add-ons that were only available on February 1st when all of the other books were released. So first we have a book called Good Material by Dolly Elderton. And that was actually a book that was released back in November of 2023. So we had a November 2023 release as an add-on for February's Book of the Month box. Another add-on for February was a historical fiction called The Disappearance of Astrid Barclay by Natasha Lester. That was released way back in September of 2023. We also had a book called Neighbors and Other Stories by Diane Oliver. Now this was actually released in February. However, Diane Oliver actually passed away in the 60s and these were stories that she wrote around that time about life in the 50s and 60s. So these are some very, very old short stories that were compiled and then put into a book that was released in February. And then the final add-on was a book called Hard by a Great Forest. This again was a January 30th release, so if this had been on my radar at all, it would have been featured in the January Book of the Month predictions. All right, now we're going to go ahead and jump into the March predictions, and like I said, there are a lot of them, and there is actually the possibility for a lot of repeat authors, and I did want to ask you your opinion on Book of the Month continuously featuring repeat authors, because I had actually heard quite a lot of people pretty upset over the fact that there is a high possibility for a lot of repeats in March, and I'm not entirely sure I understand why people are so upset about it. I mean, I do understand the desire to discover lesser known or debut authors and books from Book of the Month because that's really the draw of Book of the Month, right? It is a book discovery service. However, I feel like there's a little bit of a logic disconnect here when you are so adamant about discovering new books and new authors. And then what happens when you find a book and author that you love, what you never want to see them featured again on Book of the Month? Book of the Month has featured some authors so many times they featured their entire collection like Riley Sager. Every single Riley Sager I own is in a book of the month edition and if they were to stop featuring Riley Sager and I had to get different editions going forward that would actually make me a little bit upset so I really hope that they don't and if we're being quite honest book of the month is a business at its heart and soul book of the month is a business and there are some big money makers for book of the month with repeat authors like Riley Sager like Kristen Hanna like Allie Hazelwood so they would actually be really ridiculous to stop featuring some of these repeat authors and quite honestly I do feel like they still strike a pretty good balance between featuring lesser known and debut authors and repeat authors and I still feel like we get quite a good selection and I'm able to discover new books and authors all the time, but I want to know your thoughts. And of course, as always, the sun is doing its own thing, so if the brightness in this video goes up and down, I apologize. We're used to chaos on this channel. All right, as per usual, my book of the month predictions have been divided into five distinct genre categories, and each category is only allowed to have up to five different predictions. We are going to start with the mystery thriller horror category, and if I can get away with it, I'm going to only read a brief blurb, but if the synopsis is pretty short, I will go ahead and read the synopsis just to give you an 
idea of what these books are about so you can make an educated decision on whether or not you would like to add them to your March Book of the Month box if they are featured. Of course, the first one that I'm very excited about is Simone St. James' newest release called Murder Road. I have really enjoyed Simone St. James in the past. I absolutely loved the Sundown Motel. She's been featured quite a few times on Book of the Month. I believe three of her releases have been featured and so I would love to see her featured again. This is another instance where I'm not mad about a repeat author. This is set in July 1995. April and Eddie have taken a wrong turn. They're looking for the small resort town where they plan to spend their honeymoon. When they spot what appears to be a lone hitchhiker along the deserted road, they stop to help. But not long after the hitchhiker gets into their car, they see the blood seeping from her jacket and a truck barreling down after them. When the hitchhiker dies at the local hospital, April and Eddie find themselves in the crosshairs of the Cold Lake Falls Police. Unexplained murders have been happening along Atticus Line for years, and the cops finally have two witnesses who easily become their only suspects. As April and Eddie start to dig into the history of the town and that horrible stretch of road to clear their names, they soon learn that there is something supernatural at work, something that could not only tear the town and its dark secrets apart, but take April and Eddie down with it. Of course, this is going to lean towards the supernatural. Most of Simone St. James's books do. I am absolutely here for it. I love the tropes that are being featured in this story, and I am down for this one. Another repeat author we could see on Book of the Month is Carola Lovering with By Baby. She wrote a book I believe was called Too Good to Be True, which was featured on Book of the Month, and I actually really enjoyed that one overall. I had a pretty decent reading experience, so I wouldn't mind seeing another one from her on Book of the Month. This just says a missing baby, a fraught friendship, and a secret that can never be told. It says told in alternating perspectives and Lovering's signature suspenseful style, By Baby confronts the myriad ways friendship changes and evolves over time, the lingering echoes of childhood trauma, and the impact of women's choices in their lifelong relationship. So I believe this follows a woman and her baby is taken and so it kind of goes from there. This is definitely one that sounds intriguing to me. Like I said, I have enjoyed Carola Lovering in the past and I would not mind trying this one as well if it's featured in Book of the Month. So this next one only recently came to my attention and it's probably equal mix like literary slash general fiction and mystery but I am going to go ahead and place it firmly in the mystery category because that seems to be what it's shelved the most as but it's called Sleeping Giants by Renee Denfield and I am going to read the synopsis of this one because I found it really intriguing. It says 20 years ago a nine-year-old boy was swept away by powerful waves on a remote Oregon beach his body lost to the sea. Only a stone memorial remains to mark his tragic death. For most of her life Amanda Dufresne had no idea she had an older brother named Dennis Owens or that he had died. Adopted as a baby she learned about him while looking into her late birth mother and is curious to know more about this lost sibling. A solitary young woman, Amanda has always felt distance from the world around her. Her brain works differently from others, leaving her feelings set apart. Her one true companion is the orphaned polar bear she cares for working at the zoo. By getting to know her birth family, she hopes to understand more about herself. Retired police officer Larry Palmer is a widower with nothing but time and in need of a purpose. He offers to help Amanda find answers. The search leads to shocking and heartbreaking discoveries. Dennis Owens had been a forgotten foster child abandoned to a home for disturbed boys off the coast. As Amanda and Larry dig deeper into the past, the two stumble upon decades of cruelty and hidden crimes, including a barbaric treatment still used today. Told in Renee Denfield's inimitable style, Sleeping Giants is an enthralling and heartbreaking novel that burrows deep in the heart and will leave no reader untouched. I am very intrigued and this is actually one that's certainly going on my radar and my TBR. Now this next one is certainly getting a lot of buzz. It is going around. I don't know how likely it would be to be featured in March's Book of the Month box but I did want to mention it here because it is going around so often and is getting a lot of hype. It is called Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera and I believe this is going to have a podcast element. So it follows Lucy. She's found wandering the streets one day covered in her best friend Savvy's blood and everyone thinks she's a murderer. Lucy and Savvy were the golden girls of their small Texas town. Pretty, smart, and enviable. Lucy married a dream guy with a big ring and an even bigger new home. Savvy was a social butterfly loved by all and if you believe the rumors, especially popular with the men in town. But now the phenomenally huge hit true crime podcast Listen for the Lie and its two good looking host Ben Owens have decided to investigate Savvy's murder for the show's second season. Lucy is forced to return to the place she vowed never to set foot in again to solve her friend's murder even if she is the one that did it. So again we have a lot of tropes here that I really enjoy seeing in thrillers. We have a reluctant return home, we have somebody with a secret, we have a murder that's being solved, we have a podcast, but this is certainly one that is on my radar. Whether or not I was going to feature it in this video or new release video, it doesn't matter. It is certainly going on my TBR and I wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see it featured in Book of the Month. Now the next and final one for this category is one that is consistently shelved as horror. It is called Monsters We Have Made by Lindsay Stark. It says 10 years ago Sylvia Gray's young daughter Faye attacked her babysitter in order to impress the Kingman, a monster she and her best friend had encountered on the internet. When the now 21 year old Faye goes missing, leaving her toddler behind, Sylvia launches a search that propels her back in the past and back into the Kingman's orbit. With the help of her estranged husband, her estranged sister, and a charismatic professor, Sylvia draws dangerously closer not only to Faye but also to the truth about the monster that once inspired her. Will Sylvia be able to reach her daughter before history repeats itself, or will it be Sylvia this time who loses her grip on reality and succumbs to the dark powers of this monstrous figure? So we're definitely getting a lot of references to monsters in here, but I don't necessarily think that's literal, so I'm not entirely 
entirely sure why this is horror. Maybe it is literal. Maybe there are actual monsters in the story. All I know is that it's shelved as horror and that's what I'm going to advertise this as here. So if this sounds interesting to you, be on the lookout for it in March on Book of the Month. All right, moving into the literary slash contemporary fiction category, we're going to start with a book called Like Happiness by Ursula Villarreal Mora. And this has quite a long synopsis, so I'm just going to read this here. It says, it's a searing debut about the complexities of gender, power, and fame, told through the story of a young woman's destructive relationship with a legendary writer. Told in a dual narrative that alternates between the main character's present day and her letter, Like Happiness explores the nuances of a complicated and imbalanced relationship, catalyzing a reckoning with gender, celebrity, memory, Latinx identity, and the unexpected ways power and dynamic can manifest. That certainly sounds like it's going to be poignant, raw, hard-hitting. We have a lot of complex topics being discussed in this book, and it is a debut, so we know that Book of the Month loves their debut authors. So if this sounds intriguing to you, this is certainly a top contender, I feel, for Book of the Month in March. Another debut, we have Headshot by Rita Bullwinkle. An unexpected tragedy at a community pool, family's unrelenting expectation of victory, the desire to gain or lose control, to make time speed up or stop, be frighteningly, undeniably good at something, each of the eight teenage girl boxers in this blistering debut novel has her own reasons for the sacrifices she has made to come to Reno, Nevada to compete to be named the best in the country. Through a series of face-offs that are raw, ecstatic, and punctuated by flashes of humor and tenderness, prize-winning writer Rita Bullwinkle animates the competitor's past and futures as they summon the emotion, imagination, and force of will required to win. So this is following female boxers, and that is certainly not a topic that I see covered very often in books at all. It says, frenetic, surprising, and strikingly original headshot is a portrait of the desire, envy, perfectionism, madness, and sheer physical pleasure that motivates young women to fight, even and perhaps especially when no one else is watching. And again, another debut that I think has a high probability of being featured on Book of the Month in March. Now this next book, Memory Piece by Lisa Ko, is actually a very genre blending book. It is definitely literary fiction, it's historical fiction, but it's also science fiction because it spans the gamut of time periods. I believe it runs from like 1980 through 2040. So I'm going to go ahead and place it squarely in literary fiction, but it seems like it could span multiple genres. This brief blurb says, moving from the pre-digital 1980s to the art and tech subcultures of the 1990s to a strikingly imagined portrait of the 2040s, Memory Peace is an innovative and audacious story of three lifelong friends as they strive to build satisfying lives in a world that turns out to be radically different from the ones they were promised. So this is actually giving me a little bit of Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow vibes by Gabrielle Zevin, which follows a friendship over many years. And in this instance, we're following a friendship over 60 years. I definitely like the more character-driven stories that follows complex relationship dynamics. And it seems like that is exactly what this is going to have. This is not Lisa Ko's debut book. And to my knowledge, she hasn't been featured on Book of the Month before, although I could be wrong. But this is certainly a notable one to watch out for for Marge's Book of the Month selections. Another repeat author we could see in this category is Xochitl Gonzalez with Anita De Monte Laughs Last. She was featured before on Book of the Month with Olga Dies Dreaming. That's why she would be a repeat author. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about her here. This does also seem to be very genre blending. It definitely sounds like it's going to be some historical fiction, some mystery. But again, I'm placing it firmly in the literary fiction category for the purposes of this video. So this says 1985, Anita De Monte, a rising star in the art world, is found dead in New York City. Her tragic death is the talk of the town, until it isn't. By 1998, Anita's name has been all but forgotten, certainly by the time Raquel, a third year art history student, is preparing her final thesis. On College Hill, surrounded by privileged students whose futures are already paved out for them, Raquel feels like an outsider. Students of color like her are the minority there, and the pressure to work twice as hard for the same opportunities is no secret. But when Raquel becomes romantically involved with a well-connected older art student, Student, she finds herself unexpectedly rising up the social ranks as she attempts to straddle both worlds. She stumbles upon Anita's story, raising questions about the dynamics of her own relationship, which eerily mirrors that of the forgotten artist. Moving back and forth through time and told from the perspectives of both women, Anita De Monte Laughs Last is a propulsive, witty examination of power, love, and art, daring to ask who gets to be remembered and who is left behind in the rarefied world of the elite. So if you have read Olga Dies Dreaming in the past and you like this, this is another one that sounds like it's going to uncover a lot of really complex topics. And again, another one I would not be surprised to be featured on Book of the Month in March. And then the final one I want to reference for this category is a book called After Annie by Anna Quinlan. Anna Quinlan was a repeat author on Book of the Month. That's why I wanted to feature this one here. This says, when Annie Brown dies suddenly, her husband, her four young children, and her closest friend are left to struggle without the woman who has centered their lives. Bill Brown finds himself overwhelmed and Annie's best friend, Anne Marie, is lost to old bad habits without Annie's support. So wait, let me get this straight. The main character who passed away is Annie. Her friend is Anne Marie and the author is Anna. Okay, so she's got something going on with the name Anne here. It is Anna's daughter, Allie, forced to try to care for her younger brothers and even her father who manages to maintain some semblance of their former lives for them all and who confronts the complicated truths of adulthood. Yet over the course of the next year, while Annie looms large in their memories, all three are able to grow, to change, even to become stronger and more
more sure of themselves. The enduring power Annie gave to those who loved her is the power to love and to go on without her. So off the top of my head, this actually kind of seems a little bit generic, a little bit vague. It's definitely going to cover grief, which y'all know I love. And it sounds like this is going to be a family that's falling apart after the death of the mother, the wife, etc., and all the things that they have to overcome and the challenges that they face in order to maybe come back together again as a family. So this is definitely going to feature those complex family dynamics that I look forward to. For all intents and purposes, I should really love this book, but there's nothing like really jumping out at me about it, nothing special or unique. But it's not one that I would be surprised to see on Book of the Month. And if you love a good literary family drama, this might be one to keep your eye out for. All right, moving on into romance. Surprisingly, this is another full category. Typically, romance is not a full category for me here, but there are a lot of romance authors that are releasing new books in March that have been previously featured on Book of the Month. I'm just going to run through them really quickly here. The first is Kennedy Ryan's newest release called This Could Be Us. Now, this is technically the second book in the Skyland series, and the first book in this series was featured on Book of the Month in the past. Book of the Month does like to continue series, even if the books are only released as add-on selections. So I would say that this is probably my top contender for a romance release for book of the month in March. I'm not going to read the synopsis of this just because I don't want to risk any spoilers that could come about from the first book. But if you do like Kennedy Ryan, if you did read that first book, be sure to be on the lookout for this one in March. Next, we actually have the newest release by Rebecca Sorrell called Expiration Dates. Now I've always been intrigued by her, but I've never picked up a book by her. So please let me know if you've enjoyed her books in the past and what you think, because I actually really enjoy the synopsis of this one. Daphne Bell believes the universe has a plan for her. Every time she meets a new man, she receives a slip of paper with his name and number on it, the exact amount of time they will be together. The papers told her she'd spend three days with Martin in Paris, five weeks with Noah in San Francisco, and three months with Hugo, her ex-boyfriend turned best friend. Daphne has been receiving the numbered papers for over 20 years, always wondering when there might be one without an expiration. Finally, the night of a blind date at her favorite Los Angeles restaurant, there's only a Jake. But as Jake and Daphne's story unfolds, Daphne finds herself doubting the paper's prediction and wrestling with what it means to be both committed and truthful, because Daphne knows things Jake doesn't, information that if he found out would break his heart. Told with her signature warmth and insight into matters of the heart, Rebecca Sorrell has finally set her sights on romantic love. The result is a gripping, emotional, passionate, and yes, heartbreaking novel about what it means to be single, what it means to find love, and ultimately how we define each of them ourselves. Expiration Dates is the one fans have been waiting for. So it sounds like maybe her other books don't necessarily feature romantic love as heavily as this one, or if at all. So again, I'm very intrigued by the synopsis of this one. This sounds very, very interesting. It definitely has a little bit of a speculative nature to it as well. I would be very intrigued to see this one on Book of the month again she would be a repeat author so it's not out of the question for sure. Another repeat author Kate Claiborne is coming out with a new release called The Other Side of Disappearing. She wrote Georgie All Along which I read and it was fine. It was nothing super memorable but again a repeat author. She could easily be featured on Book of the Month in March. I'm just going to read this blurb here. It says accompanied by two documentary podcasters two sisters drive across the country to unravel the mystery of a notorious con man who ran away with their mother in this timely movie modern love story about intimacy and truth telling in the digital age from the acclaimed author of Georgie All Along and love lettering. So the blurb itself is really catchy. Like I'm really intrigued by this, but I wasn't necessarily impressed enough by Georgie all along to read this, but I'm certainly very intrigued by this blurb. So keep your eye out for this one in March. We also have the newest release from Alison Winscotch called Take Two Birdie Maxwell. She wrote a book called The Rewind, which was featured on Book of the Month. And that was actually the last book of 2022 that I read and I wasn't very impressed with it at all. So I definitely don't think this is one that I would be picking up, but she certainly could be featured again as a repeat author. This just says Hollywood's biggest rom-com star tries to recover from her damaged reputation by staging her own rom-com and following a lead on lost love. That's all I'm really going to read about it. You know that it's probably going to be a cute fun time but again the rewind didn't really have a lot of substance for me but if you enjoyed the rewind be on the lookout for this one for sure. All right and the final book that I want to mention for this category is a book called In a Not So Perfect World by Neely Tubadi Alexander. This blurb says it's a delightful Caribbean set romp about an ambitious designer of apocalyptic video games with a strategy for almost everything who discovers what happens when her best laid plans go off course. So this is actually not an author that I've ever heard of before, but early reviews for it are good for this book. Currently a 4.26 on Goodreads. So if that sounds interesting to you, keep an eye out for it in March. All right, moving on into the historical fiction category. I actually didn't really have many historical fictions that I felt strongly about. There are a handful that are coming out in March that are somewhat notable, but none of them really stood out to me as strong contenders for Book of the Month. So I only have a couple to talk to you about today. One of them that has certainly been going around is a book called The Great Divide by Christina Henry. Enriquez says an epic novel of the construction of the Panama Canal casting light on the unsung people who lived, loved, and labored there by Christina Henriquez, acclaimed author of the Book of Unknown Americans. The Great Divide explores the intersecting lives of activists, fishmongers, laborers, journalists, neighbors, doctors, and soothsayers, those rarely acknowledged by history even as they carved out its course. So this is definitely covering a time
time period and peoples that you don't often see covered in history. It is the creation of the Panama Canal. So this is certainly a notable historical fiction release that is coming out in March. This is probably the top contender for historical fiction category if Book of the Month is going to feature one of them in March. Definitely keep your eye out for this one. Another one that is going to kind of cover topics that I don't often see covered is a book called Pelican Girls by Julia Malgi, I believe is how you pronounce her name. This says it is a sweeping epic in the vein of Philip Meyer's The Sun and Minjin Lee's Pachinko and inspired by a true story, the stunning U.S. literary debut captures the never-before-told journey of the Baleen, a ship full of young women plucked from a Paris asylum and sent to marry settlers in North America's rough Louisiana territory. It says at once a gorgeously written work of startling depth and emotion and a gripping drama marrying high seas adventure with pioneer grit. Pelican Girls is a powerful thought-provoking novel about female friendship and desire and the daunting compromise women are forced to make to survive. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be very harrowing, very rough, a lot of women having to overcome atrocities at the hands of men, which unfortunately gets to be featured far too frequently in books because it's featured far too frequently in real life. So this is definitely one that piqued my interest and it's on my radar for sure. And I would love to see this featured on Book of the Month just because I think it is very different. And it's another important topic that we don't often hear covered. This is definitely something that happened in history that I don't think I've ever learned about previously. So I would love to see this one featured. And this last one that I want to mention, I'm not sure how strongly I feel about it, but I do believe it is a debut and it is certainly one that I'm hearing the most about in terms of historical fiction. It is called The Divorcees by Rowan Beard. It says, Lois Saunders thought marrying the right man would cure her loneliness, but as picture perfect as her husband is, she is suffocating in their loveless marriage. In 1951, though, unhappiness is hardly grounds for divorce, except in Reno, Nevada. Okay, so we're going to have another book set in Reno, Nevada. That is really unusual. Headshot is also at least partially set in Reno, Nevada. It says, At the Golden Yarrow, the most respectable of Reno's famous divorce ranges, Lois finds herself living with half a dozen other would-be divorcees, all in Reno for the six-week residency that is the state's only divorce requirement. They spend their days riding horses and their nights flirting with cowboys, and it's as wild and fun as Lake Forest, Illinois is prim and stifling. But it isn't until Greer Lang arrives that Lois's world truly cracks open. Gorgeous, beguiling, and completely indifferent to societal convention, Greer is unlike anyone Lois has ever met. She sees something in Lois that no one else ever has. Under her influence, Lois begins to push against the limits that have always restrained her. But how much can she really trust her mysterious new friend? And how far will she go to forge her independence on her own terms? So that is definitely very domestic sounding historical fiction, which is not typically my jam. But I do like the idea of a woman kind of finding herself and finding her strength and trying to overcome some of the obstacles and challenges that she's facing in her life, especially during a time period when women really had no autonomy, no say, and they couldn't really just divorce when they wanted to divorce, right? So this, like I said, is certainly one that I've been seeing going around and I wouldn't mind seeing it on Book of the Month. I don't know if I would pick it up, but this is one that I wouldn't be surprised to see. All right, and then moving on into the final category, which is the science fiction, fantasy, and magical realism. I actually only have one book that really struck my interest and gained my attention and I thought could be a potential contender for this category on Book of the Month. It is a book called Annie Bot by Sierra Greer. And it says, Annie Bot was created to be the perfect girlfriend for her human owner, Doug. Designed to satisfy his emotional and physical needs, she has dinner ready for him every night, wears the pert outfits he orders for her and adjusts her libido to suit his moods. Gross. True, she's not the greatest at keeping Doug's place spotless, but she's trying to please him. She's trying hard. She's learning, too. Doug says he loves that Annie's AI makes her seem more like a real woman, so Annie explores human traits such as curiosity, secrecy, and longing. But becoming more human also means becoming less perfect, and as Annie's relationship with Doug grows more intricate and difficult, she starts to wonder, does Doug really desire what he says he wants? And in such an impossible paradox, what does Annie owe herself? This is definitely going to explore the boundaries between human and robot, because it sounds like she's a very lifelike AI. She's essentially this man's wife for all intents and purposes. She satisfies every need that he has, but she is also kind of sentient in her own way. And it sounds like she and him are going to grow legitimately closer. It's not necessarily something that's in my wheelhouse. It's not something that I would typically pick up, but it is certainly an intriguing premise. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it because it also sounds like it's going to be more like a literary science fiction overall, because it's going to explore some of those more complex philosophical topics. So this one is intriguing, definitely. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all my predictions for the book of the month selections in March. As always, please comment down below and let me know if you think that I've missed any important selections that could be featured on book of the month. I'm definitely no expert for sure in predicting what book of the month is going to do because they just do their own thing. They do whatever they want. I'd be really interested to know what your thoughts are on some potentials for the book of the month selections. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, go ahead and leave me some type of like robot emoji if there is any in honor of Annie Bot because that is definitely the premise that I found the most intriguing for sure. And as always, if you like this video or if 
you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already i typically post two days a week on wednesdays and sundays and i would love to connect with you in any of those videos or on any of my other social media platforms which i always leave linked down below along with the books that i might talk about in a video until next time y'all bye